Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are in full learning mode because today we're gonna play with something that we've never played with yet and that is the infamous Dieselgate TDI. Today is the day we are going to get this CP4 pump off. I've got the timing kit for it, came in the mail about a week ago now. Haven't had a lot of time to deal with it, but you know, I've been dealing with a lot of other stuff as you guys see every single day of the week, five days. That said, the reason that this job is challenging or hard is because my experience with TDIs is limited. Most of my diesel knowledge all comes from big, like big trucks, like F-250s, 350s, 450s, uh, big Cummins, uh, Dodge Ram Cummins, like one tons, a lot of Duramax stuff, a lot of Duramax, probably 70% Duramax stuff. That said, diesels are diesels. Like, as far as like what's going on inside of them, how they work, it's all the same. Now these, these are different than say a Cummins or a Duramax. In the grand scheme of it, they're the same. It's no different than a gas engine, right? It's all internal combustion. And there's some pretty big basics that you have to have. One of those is we gotta get the timing right. I gotta get completely educated on what all of these bits in here do. Come on, it's not that hard. Get on the internet, do some Googling, figure some things out. We can all read, we can get this done, right? That's the way I see it. That said, this is also gonna be the first one of these I've ever done. So Dom, I love you. Thank you for letting me potentially screw up your drug running mule. We got this, we can get this done. It's nothing but nuts and bolts here, people. Nothing but nuts and bolts. I'm gonna set the camera down real quick. I'm gonna get myself highly educated and we're gonna come back in about YouTube world, 16 milliseconds. In real world, 20 minutes-ish. Now that I'm educated, um, watched a couple quick tutorial videos, read a couple old four-year-old, five-year-old forum write-ups. General gist here is we gotta take this liner out to get down to that, and we gotta set this to TDC, and then there's some marks down there, some marks down on the crank pulley that we gotta line up, that that little notch right there lines up within the crank. So, got a game plan, we're gonna go after it. Ugh. There's so much room in here for activities. You could even put a factory fog light in there. Look at that. Please, somebody get down in the comments section. Instigate Dom to get fog lights for this. I know there's gotta be an eBay kit out there someplace. Here we go. So this little guy right here has to get turned. Then we gotta pop these bolts out here. And we gotta take this belt off here. Ooh, a really small end. Oh, there's a cat right over there. Look at that. Meow. Let's get some stuff off. Lower belts off. Now we gotta get these triple squares out of here. I left my set of these at the house, but my pops had these ones, and this is a triple square M10. It's made by Duralas, which was pretty dope, I thought, that they even offered something like this. But we gotta get these guys out. <laughs> all right, make sure to get it all the way down in there. The last thing we wanna do is strip one of these out. <laughs> these are coming out nice. Let's get this cover off. Oh, that was sort of a hidden bolt. I don't think there is. Not supposed to be. There we go. No hidden bolt. Ah, perfect. Okay. Now we got access to all the goodness. All right, guys. Now we got everything out of there. So the lower covers are all off. Now we just got to get this thing to rotate around. Supposedly, where's it at? Right there is the timing notch. So I gotta rotate this thing around to line that notch with that notch right there. And then that pin right there has to go in that little hole back there. That's the game plan. Let's get it done. Huh, that wasn't so bad. I don't know what this is for, but we're gonna put it back in there. I guess my bigger thing would be that thing freaking just like, oh, let's come out. Like that's kind of sus, but sure, whatever. All right. Well, we got the lower lock pin in. I end up making a little washer here because I didn't like it here. I end up putting a little washer to go through the bolt because this bracket, this like lock bar just sits there and 
you know, just flop all over the place. So put a washer behind there, put one of the factory bolts back in, just kind of keep that thing in place. And then up here, the kit comes with this little pin and it goes right down. Wrong hole. There we go. You gotta just wiggle around till you can find it. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, so you shove that thing down in there, it locks it all the way in. So I'm gonna go one step farther and I'm gonna take a paint pen and mark the belt and the timing gear down here and the same thing down there. So before we relieve the belt tensioner, we can take these bolts loose and then hopefully relieve the tensioner take this off, strap the two together, and then we don't gotta worry about the belt like slipping and going anywhere. That's the plan. Cross my fingers, it works the way I'm thinking it does in my mind. And let's see if we can get it done. Guy on the internet said to make sure to have a nice long wrench to get down in there. So right here where I'm bumping on the tensioner. There's a little notch on the side of there. If you take a pry bar, you should be able to just slowly bump the tensioner around and it, it goes a long way. It's almost like 180 degrees in full rotation before it's got enough tension loose on it to get the, uh, get the timing belt off. The belt ended up coming off completely different than what I was thinking. I guess I should have looked at it a little bit better and I would have realized that the tensioner side of it and the side where all the slack was, wasn't gonna be in the same spot and fumbled it a little bit, is what it is. But the belt's off, everything is marked so we can easily get it right back to where it was. Now we gotta get to this pump here. So I already pulled the bolts out of the housing, out of the pulley, and this is supposed to just slide off of there. Yeah, there we go, okay. And now, now I get to use this tool and that, boom, yeah, okay. So that holds that. And the idea here is supposed to be that you put this tool on that pulley, which allows you to hold that there while you counter rotate that nut off. Then you put another tool in to pull this off and then you can unbolt. It's a whole lot of those things to make things more difficult. It's all right though. It gives me an opportunity to make a cool meme about it. Be right back after this message. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. Okay. All right, well, that uh, worked out super well, I mean, really well. This is a power steering puller, actually. This kit, which you can get at Advanced Auto Parts, kit number 45, if you care to know. From that, I bought this kit from Advanced Auto Parts a very long time ago, but it worked perfect. The only thing I did have to do, I noticed that there's a little pinhole right there. To keep this whole thing from rotating around, it kept it locked in place. Like, it's not a crazy amount of force, but it was definitely tight. Like, it had a nice good pop to it. I'm sure if you took a pry bar to it, you'd really screw some stuff up, probably never get it off, and end up just doing more harm to other bits in here, so. Wouldn't suggest that. So now we are kind of to the exciting part of this whole thing. Nothing else is standing in our way of getting this pump off except, sorry, a handful of bolts. This one right here, this one right here, and that one right there, and the pump is ready to come off finally. Hey, look at that. Look at that, we got that pump off. That's pretty cool. All right, so there are four bolts in that case there, so we can definitely split this case in half. I bet you this center section here is, comes out somehow. I don't know what's going on here, but we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna get this thing apart and see how toast it really is. I know there's a cam follower down in here. Let's see if we can get that thing out of there real quick, because it moves. Ah, there we go. Oh yeah, she flat. She is definitely flat. Look at that, you can see it right there. You can see it clear as day, she's flat right there. Oh yeah, you can get down in there. Yeah, you can see right where it ran across that cam. It looks like it jumped sideways in there. That's what it looks like. Looks like it jumped sideways in there. Which is pretty common. Kind of what I expected to see in there. So what happens is the follower is supposed to sit flush like that and roll on that cam down on that cam down in there 
which literally looks just like a cam lobe on like say a camshaft in your car. And what happens is this lobe just rides up and down like that, building pressure and then pushing pressure, um, building pressure coming up back through here, yada yada yada, does some voodoo in there and it makes high pressure for your direct injection. Well, what happens, at least according to the class action lawsuit, with Ford that I've been reading over the 6.7 CP4 2 pump is that this follower will, because there's no lock pin on the outside of it anywhere to orient it, unlike the high pressure fuel pumps on the 2.0 gas engines, there's a little pin on the side of it. What happens is this cam follower will pick up, rotate, and go back down in there, hence causing the odd wear. And if you look in there, you can see how it looks like there's a line all the way around it. Basically what happens there is that follower turns sideways, still work, the damage is done. Once it's dropped sideways, it's it just sits there and tears itself to pieces. And then you end up in this case like this, where the car will drive and drive and drive, and it'll eventually just go and shut down. So the way Dom was explaining it to me, it's feeling almost felt like the car ran out of fuel. I find that very interesting. At the same time, it does bring up the question, is the injectors clogged? Is that where all the metal went? It is starting to look like he might have to do fuel injectors in this thing. I'm not gonna guarantee it yet, but we are gonna first put a high pressure pump on there and see what we get from there. If there's any damage already into the injectors, putting a pump on it's not necessarily gonna do any more damage to them, nor is it gonna necessarily do any damage to the new pump that we put on. And that's solely because the pump is like self-contained away from the system, at least the injector side. So I'm not super concerned about it. I am holding the reservation. I think we might end up needing injectors. We're gonna find out soon enough though. We will find out soon enough. As far as rebuilding this, seeing what I see down in there, knowing that everything is still rotating smoothly, I'm gonna tear it apart some more, but I think if I can get my hands on the part, we're gonna give a rebuild a shot. This doesn't look awful. My research that I've looked into it on people who rebuild the 6.7 pump, 100% doable, but I've never done it. It all comes down to, can I get my hands on the parts that we're gonna need? And that's what I gotta find out. That's what we gotta talk to Dom about and see what he really wants to do. So guys, that's where I'm gonna end this one. Make sure you're subscribed if you wanna catch more about the TDI and how what ends up coming of it. If you're interested in race car shit or the finest of the internals on German engineered automobile technology, consider subscribing. Click the notification bell to get notified of all the content that we put out. All we do every day on this channel is figure out ways to save thousands of dollars on working on our own shit boxes, and hopefully I can inspire a few of you guys along the way to do so. Until tomorrow, so thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Peace, I'm Audi. Ooh, I got dirty hands, don't touch the screen.